Hello, everyone. My name is Ilana Sakova. I'm a developer advocate in Kotlin. And today I want to talk with you about idiomatic Kotlin. And not in the abstract, but on a specific example. What's the best way to become bad in a language? Of course, writing code. And solving fun tasks from advent of code is a great opportunity to practice skills in the language. Advent of Code is a yearly challenge created by Eric Vassell. It's great fun. Uh, the challenge takes place in December. Yep, we are far away from it. But now is the perfect time to prepare for the next year, uh, next one together, by solving the tasks from the last year. Of course, uh, the best way to learn is uh, solve the task yourself. After that, compare the solution with others. And we want to prepare such solutions to compare with. So ideally, try to solve the task first. But just checking the solution also works. You'll definitely find something useful. This video contains the solution for the first task. And if you decide to solve it, it will take only three minutes, I promise. Why is this video more than three minutes then? We'll also discuss a more efficient solution for the same problem. So we believe that solving such tasks is a great way to learn idiomatic Kotlin and the standard library. So let's begin this journey. What's the first task is about? You can find the full description on adventofcode.com 2020 day one. Uh, there is a nice story there. You can read it if you haven't done it. But in essence, the task is the following. We have a list of numbers as input, and we need to find two that sum up to 2020 and multiply them. That will be the result. And in the second part, each task consists of two parts. We need to find three numbers that sum up to 2020 and multiply them. That's it. Let's now implement it in Kotlin. We start with defining the main function. It's an entry point to our program. What should we do next? At first, read and parse the input. In our case, it's a list of numbers where each number goes in a separate line. Let's read these numbers from the file. We can use an extension function, read lines, to read a list of lines, a list of strings. Next, we need to convert each string to a number. We call the toInt function on string. It makes the conversion if it's possible, or throws an exception otherwise. There is also to int or null, which returns null on error. But here we assume that our input is correct. We can use either lambdas or member references. The next step is finding two numbers that sum to 2020. What uh, we can do is uh, we can iterate over a list of numbers. Then, for each first number, we iterate again and check if the sum of the two numbers is 2020. If so, we found our result. Let's print separately two numbers and the required multiplication. Since we found the result, we can return from the function. Let's run our program and make sure the result is the same as expected for the sample input. Next, we should solve the second part of the task and find the three numbers that sum to 2020. Let's add another nested for a loop and check now that the three numbers satisfy our requirement. Now we print them and print the multiplication. We compare it with the expected result. Everything is correct. That's it. The first task is really a simple one. However, the trivial solution isn't the most efficient one. We have three nested loops here. Let's say n is the number of elements. 
for the first part and finding two numbers, it makes it n squared a number of operations. For the second part and three numbers, it's n cubed number of operations. Surely there should be a better way, right? There definitely is, and the Kotlin Standard Library can help us to express that really concisely. As it often happens, we can replace the long calculation with some kind of smart storage used to find the result. At first, let's build a map for number complements, the numbers that together with the given number sum up to our desired 2020. We use the Kotlin associate by function to build a map. The Kotlin Strand library has three similar functions to build a map from the given list. The first one is called associate. In its lambda, you specify how to build a key and a value from each element. The second one, the one we are using, is associate by. It uses list uh, elements as values, and you specify what should become a key for each element. And at last, there is the associate with function, which uses list elements as keys, but you specify what should become a value for each element. We can display our usage of associate functions. You can see associate requires both keys and values, associate by uses each number as a value, and associate with uses each number as a key. Now let's return to our map of complements. Let's display both the initial list and this map. The initial numbers become values, and the complement number becomes the key. If you look at this map, you already can see the answer. The first number in the list is present as a key in the map, but its corresponding value is a number from the initial list. That means that the number together with its complement are both present in the initial list. And they can pose the result, these two numbers sum to 2020. Good. This map is of great help to us. So now let's simplify into the desired number, the one that is also a key in the map. For that, we iterate over the initial list of numbers and find all that are present in the complements map. Since we need two numbers for the result, let's first map each number to either a complements pair or null. First, we find the complement number. If it exists, we need a pair as a result. Otherwise, it's null. Now we have a list of pairs or nulls. So we need to filter out nulls to have only the list of pairs as the result. We can say filter not null and immediately see that IntelliJ suggests a simplification for us. You can merge map and filter not null to one map not null call. The only remaining step is getting the first element. It's the required pair of numbers that sum to 2020. Now we can even further simplify this call chain and replace map not null and first with one first not null of call. It's a shortcut for these two subsequent calls. We store the result in a pair and display both numbers and their multiplication. We can again check that we got the same numbers as before. The next step is to solve this problem for three numbers. If you want, you can stop this video and think of how to find the required three numbers in an efficient way. We'll use uh, what we already have so let's first extract the logic of finding a pair of numbers in a separate function. We want to extract this logic of building a complement map for a given number and finding a pair. But before we call the automatic refactoring, I want to extract the 2020 constant in the temporary variable. Let's call it sum. I simply want it to become a function parameter. 
let's use extract function refactoring. This function doesn't have to be private. Let's call it find pair of sum. We can inline the variable back because we can pass this custom directly. This function now takes the list of numbers as a parameter, uh, but I would rather make it a receiver. Then find pair of sum becomes an extension to this list. Inside the function body, we can call members on the list without explicit specification. You see that we call the associate bar directly. We also now call an extension function directly on number as it was a member. One more thing. We can also inline the pair variable and return the result directly. What we want to do eventually is to build a helper storage as, a, as before, to store the complement pair of values for each value. But not each number has a complementing pair. We need this function to return a nullable pair instead. Currently, first uh, not null of throws an exception if the required pair isn't found. To remind you, if we have a chain of map not null and first, that's equivalent to using first not null of. Kotlin also has the first or null function, which returns you either the first value satisfying a predicate or null if there is no such value. And first not null of has the counterpart called first not null of or null, which we can use here. So now if there is no complement pair for a number, we get null as a result, not an exception. So far, we'll comment out this line. We'll return to it later. Our next step is to build a helper map that stores the complement pair of values for each number. We iterate through the list of numbers, and we associate each number with the corresponding complementing pair if it exists. Now we want to run these three numbers to sum to 2020. So we need a complementing pair that together with our number makes 2000 ready. It is it the default name for the lambda argument. Let's draw this map in a variable, complement pairs. Let's specify the type explicitly. It's a map from int to nullable pairs. It's a map from x to a pair of y and z, where y plus z equals 2020 minus x. In other words, three of them sum up to 2020. Let's call the parameter x for correspondence. Let's print out the complement pairs. As before, you already can see the answer. is the number that corresponds to a non-nullable pair in the map. This number has the complementing pair, and that means that the three numbers sum up to 2020 together. Now, the only thing left to us is to find this value in the map. Interestingly, we don't need to build the whole map to find one value. We can stop when we already found the first number that corresponds to a non-nullable pair. We need to find the first element in the numbers, at least satisfying the given condition. We are using the function that we already discussed, first not null of or null, to return nullable triple as a result. We should check that this number has the complementing pair. We say numbers find pair of sum passing uh, 2020 minus x as an argument, similar to how we build a map of complement pairs. If this part is not null, we will return this time triple as the result. Otherwise, we return null. And that's it. Let's extract it to a similar function, find triple of sum, which returns triple. Let's say it might be a nullable triple if there is no such number in the map. Let's also define it as an extension function, as before. This function returns us triple. Let's print it and make sure the required result is found. Now, the only thing left is printing the multiplication result. We have the same problem as with pair. It's now nullable, and uh, we can't access it. We should explicitly check if it's not null. One way to do it is to add an explicit if check. 
but there is also a more cuddling way, using let together with safe access. That means, if this variable is null, print null as a result. If it's not null, call let and destructure a pair into two variables and multiply them. The same trick works for triple. If it's not null, destruct it into three values and multiply them. If the triple variable is null, null will be printed. Note that we can also apply the same let magic to find pair of sum and find triple of sum functions. We have a similar logic there. If the expression is not null, we return a value and else return null. In Kotlin, you can replace it with using let. If the pair is not null, we construct a triple. We remove the if check and simply return triple. The same can be applied to building complements map. If the complements is not null, we construct and return a pair. If the complements map doesn't contain the given number, null becomes the result. If you are not used to it, let might seem confusing. That's totally fine. It takes time to get accustomed to this style. And afterward, you will miss it while coding in other languages. But of course, you can write in a classical style as well. So that's our resulting code. Let's run it uh, the last time to make sure that we get the expected result. Yep, it works. That's all. In the next part, we'll discuss how to solve the second task. Please share with us if you find this content useful for you and would like us to discuss solutions for more tasks.